Luke 4, 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of Him through all the region round about. And He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And He came to Nazareth where He had been brought up. And as His custom was, He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto Him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when He had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He turned, scrolled through this spot. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me, Jesus said, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Isaiah wrote this. Jesus quotes it. And Isaiah continued that Jesus paused between his first and second coming. The judgment that followed in Isaiah. Jesus closed the book. He gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day. Is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? I want to preach for just a few moments on the day or a day of deliverance. Now, would you lift your hands again and say, Lord, I believe that you, oh God, are going to do the impossible in my life. What is humanly impossible is possible with you. And I believe you, Lord, I have faith for today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Today I have a specific mission to preach and see the words of Jesus come to pass before we leave today. And I believe that Jesus Christ has ordained today as a day of deliverance. I recognize that overcoming things that bind you often involves the spiritual and the behavioral. Years ago I called Brother Trapani. I mentioned this not long ago. I was dealing with the situation in this church not long after I became pastor and I said, Brother Trapani, I need to ask your advice. He was a, a counselor. And he said, Brother Johns, if it's the devil, we can cast him out. If it's a personality, then we have problems. I recognize that there are some things that are the way you think. And there are other things that are the bondage of Satan over the way you think. He attacks us in our vulnerabilities and weaknesses and plays on our minds and the trouble that we may be causing ourselves or that we have been through uh, by the hands of other people, Satan attacks there and he establishes a stronghold there. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ pulls down strongholds. This is a picture, a word picture in the Bible for some place on a hillside that has been fortified over time. That seems to be impenetrable. But Jesus Christ by his spirit pulls down strongholds. He casts down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And he brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When you have been bound for a long, long time, it becomes your identity. It becomes a mental battle. As we worship today... I felt like I needed to tell you that the Lord may be going after some old strongholds in your life. I'm not speaking just of sin, but it may be sin. An area in your life that has become a stronghold of Satan. It fights you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It affects you physically, and it may become a physiological issue. But today, by the power of God I believe the Lord is going to come in and give deliverance and healing. Amen? And then I will tell you that the process of changing the way you think is something that the Word of God must come and displace old, improper attitudes and thoughts and patterns of thinking. But the Lord has the power to go into your past. He is not bound by time. He is not the God of just the present and everything exists for him in one eternal now. 
He is able to go back 10, 20, 30, 40 years or more. He's able to go into an incident that traumatized you, that has affected your life ever since. He has the power to go there and heal your mind and your spirit and set you free. Amen? And the Apostle Paul said we had the sentence of death in us, but God has delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Paul said there was something in the past God delivered us from. And he is still delivering us now from other things that we are facing. And he is still a God that is going to deliver us from things that we may be facing in our future. Today is a day of deliverance. Amen? Amen. Today I'd like to challenge you to do what Paul said, to forget the things which are behind You need to forgive those who have wronged you in your past. You need to let it go and you need to let it be buried just like you were buried in the name of Jesus Christ by baptism into death. You need to let God bury some things in the past so that something new can be born in your life. Amen. Amen. Today is a day of deliverance. Now Luke 4 records the temptations of Jesus Christ. He went into the wilderness to be tempted full of the Holy Ghost. And after being tempted by the devil there, 40 days of fasting, afterward he hungered. He came out of the wilderness, Luke says, in the Spirit. He went in by the Spirit. He came out from Jordan, led by the Spirit. Luke says that Jesus went in to be tempted. And after his temptations, he came out by the power of the Spirit. And a fame of him went out throughout all the region beyond. Here is Jesus Christ proving that he has power over the devil in every area of temptation. And then Luke says after he was tempted and was victorious, he came to the synagogues and preached there. And then he came to Nazareth, his own hometown. It was his custom to go to church. That should be our custom. He was God in the flesh. He knew more than the rabbis knew. You could argue that Jesus didn't need to go to church, but he did anyway, and he went to be a part of that service. During a typical synagogue service, there was worship, and then there would be the reading of the Scripture, some from the law and then some from the prophets. Jesus stood up to read in his own hometown church in Nazareth, and they gave him the scroll of Elijah, the prophet, excuse me, of Isaiah, And Jesus is there and he finds the place where Isaiah says something about the coming Messiah. It is a dual reference to deliverance from Babylon and then the ministry that the Messiah will have. Jesus has the book of Isaiah. He is opening the book. He finds the place. He is reading from this verse and he says this that we read this morning on the screens. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. I have a feeling that when Jesus read those words, that everybody in that, in that synagogue that day realized that he was doing more than reading something that had been written 700 years ago. He was indeed speaking of himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In that moment, Jesus closed the scroll. He sat down and the Bible said that after he gave that to the minister, that everyone there that day in church, had their eyes were fastened on him. I believe that they felt the authority of his person. They felt the power of God's presence that was resident in Jesus Christ. For he was God in flesh. He was reading the word that he had inspired Isaiah to write. And in the first words recorded by Jesus after his temptations, he does not just go into a discourse speaking from himself, but he goes back and quotes the word that he had inspired, the holy word of God, the spirit of Of the Lord is upon me. One of the most powerful passages. It it starts the ministry of Jesus Christ. 
And he says, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears, the beginning of his earthly ministry. Now, Isaiah had prophesied that not only would there be the acceptable year of the Lord, but they would be the day of the vengeance of our God. But over 2,000 years separate those words that Jesus repeated from Isaiah and did not say the vengeance of our God. I want to just pause in this message to say that Jesus Christ did not come into this world to condemn the world, that the world was condemned already. And you may be condemned by your sins or by your own conscience, but the work of Jesus Christ today is not to condemn you, but to forgive you of your sins and to deliver you from the power that has you bound. Amen. Amen. Preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the brokenhearted. Preach deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. When Jesus spoke of the acceptable year of the Lord. He was making a reference to the old Jewish jubilee. That took place a year that changed everything for everybody. After seven cycles of seven years. In that 49th year. The clock began to tick down to the 50th year that God had declared as a year of Jubilee. It was launched on the 10th day of the 7th month on the day of atonement with the blast of a shofar, a trumpet, the countdown to this year of Jubilee. An entire year of celebration after 50 years. There were three specific things that took place on the year of Jubilee. First of all, the land rested for that entire year. No one farmed at all. But the God who had been with them for 49 years would give them a season of respite and rest and God would provide from the past to take care of them for that year of Jubilee. The second thing was there was a reversion of property. If through poverty, bad decisions You had to sell your family land that had been in your land, in your family for generations. On the year of Jubilee, that land of every Jewish person reverted back to the original traditional owners. The third thing that happened on the year of Jubilee is that if you were a Jewish slave, you were set free. It didn't matter if you'd been a slave for 49 years or just a few months. Every Israelite who had sold himself because of bad decisions or property was set free. And Jesus essentially declared that today the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. That I am giving you rest. I am giving you back what has been lost. I am setting you free. This indeed is a day of deliverance. Amen. That's what I have come to preach to you today. That by the power of Jesus Christ, by the work of his cross, that he has come to give the gospel to outcasts, to poor people. He has come to heal your broken heart today. Amen. He has come to preach deliverance to those of you who are bound. Amen. He has come to give recovering of sight to the blind. And I think it's interesting because this was the, this was the issue that seemed to be the most difficult. But when John 9, when Jesus healed a man that was born blind, they said, since the world began, has this ever been done? It seemed to be that opening the eyes of the blind was like the litmus test for power. But when Jesus healed the blind man, they knew if he can heal blindness, that he can heal any kind of physical illness that has ever existed in the history of the world. Amen. He said, I've come to set at liberty them that are bruised. Liberty to bruise twice in this passage. In the original Greek, it is release. He has come to release people who have been bruised, maybe in their slavery, maybe in your abuse, maybe in your addiction, that you have just had the life beat out of you. But today, there is a release coming from the presence of the Lord. He said, I have come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Freedom, deliverance, I am setting you free today. Jesus said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now, I am a pastor I open this message by giving you understanding 
about behavioral issues and spiritual issues, but they are connected together. And Satan, again, capitalizes on the struggles that we have. I would be a foolish person just to say something randomly, but this week the Lord has put in my spirit that he wanted this to be a day of deliverance. There are some old issues you battle with for far too long. Maybe 50 years it's been troubling you. Maybe it's just been a few months, but today is a day of deliverance. This is the day of the Lord's release. Characteristic of Bible prophecy, the words of Isaiah that Jesus quoted had a double reference. The first reference was to the deliverance from Babylon. I bring this on purpose because they were subject to a foreign power. There was nothing they could do politically, militarily. There was not one thing that they could do to change their circumstances of being captives in Babylon. But Almighty God, in a single thought, Put it in the heart of a king to release them. When it happened, the people of Israel in Psalm 126 said, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. We had been there for 70 years. We thought this was going to be for the rest of our life. 70 years they had been in bondage. They got used to it. They thought it would never change. And when the Lord did it on a day of deliverance, it seemed too good to be true. But then they said our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. And the heathen said the Lord has done great things for them. So today I've come to tell you that it may seem like a dream. You may think that things could never change. But I've come to declare to you by the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost that today is a day of deliverance. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord? It was Brother Brian Kinsey that said, preaching here one time, that they believed that the clapping of hands was like the sound of breaking of chains. It was symbolic to them that something was going to change. So why don't you clap your hands again as if chains are breaking in this place? Amen. The Lord is here to deliver you today from the spirit of fear and depression. You that have a wounded spirit that had been hurt and is stuck deep inside of you, the Lord is here to deliver you today. The Lord is here to heal sicknesses and He is here to deliver you from addictions. It doesn't matter how long you've been addicted and what area it is in, if it is physical, emotional, if it is mental, if it is spiritual, today is a day of deliverance. And because Jesus Christ is here to deliver you today, this will be a day of jubilee, of rejoicing. And it may seem like a dream that you put up with this for so long, and yet in a single day, the Lord broke the power of that bondage in your life to set at liberty them that are bruised and deliverance to the captives. Would you stand? like for you to bow your heads in prayer and we're going to pray a prayer of repentance repentance is a change of mind repentance is turning from your sins but I believe that repentance is also a change of mind about our identity and about the past in the future today is a line of demarcation that will separate your past from your future I'm standing here as a pastor, but I'm doing the work of an evangelist today. Hallelujah. You've been bowed down. Your spirit has been weighed down. And you thought, I, I'm just, this has become my identity. And I want to go to heaven and I want to be saved, but... I guess this is my lot in life. 
and I've just got to carry this all my life. I'll, I'll always be identified in my own mind as this abused person, as this failure by this sin that I committed that I can never get past. <clears throat> but today, I'm praying that Jesus Christ will deliver you spiritually and emotionally and mentally. So I'd like for you, if you need to confess your sins, would you lift your voice and pray right now, Lord, forgive me of my sins. If you've been harboring bitterness or resentment towards someone who wronged you, you have become the prisoner of that abuse in your life, of that hurt. So would you let them go by forgiving them so Jesus Christ can forgive you and deliver you? Let it go right now in Jesus' name. Let God fight your battles. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. It is not your place to repay those with hatred or with actions or with something in your spirit against them. Let them go today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Pray in your spirit. You pray out loud. I know you don't want to say some things out loud. Those of you that are struggling with addictions, it doesn't make sense to you. It's like an equation that doesn't work out. How can I be saved and yet I'm struggling with this? I pray against things that have tormented your mind. There's repentance. There's a change of behavior. There's letting the word of God replace those old thoughts. There's walking away from things that are causing you to be addicted. Whether it is pornography or some abuse or whatever it may be. You need to walk away from that. That's what repentance is. It is confessing and forsaking your sins. But we're tired of being a dog going back to our vomit. We're tired of being a pig going back to the wallowing in the mud, as the Bible says. Today will mark the beginning of the first day of the rest of your life. Today, as Jesus said, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Now, would you lift your hands right where you are? And would you say, Lord, I believe that you are a deliverer. And you're going to deliver us from this present evil world. Lord, you will deliver us from the power of darkness. You will, Lord God, deliver us from the fear of death. You will deliver us from a lifetime of bondage. Thank you, Lord, today that you will deliver us from every evil work and preserve us to your heavenly kingdom. To you today, Lord, we believe you, God, that you delivered Paul out of the mouth of the lion. And that you will deliver us today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it. Lift your hands everywhere. And would you declare the day of deliverance. 